we're going to start learning how to graph the trigonometric equations. Okay. Now, there are six different trigonometric equations and they all have slightly different graphs, but they all have quite a lot in common. So I'm going to spend the most time on sine and cosine and then everything else will be relatively similar. So, for any trigonometric equation, there are four places you can modify the original graph by adding A, B, C, or D. Okay. A will change the amplitude because the amplitude is always the absolute value of that A. And amplitude means how tall the graph is. Now, interestingly enough, for sine, the amplitude is one half of the height because it's the difference from the center to the top or from the center to the bottom, but it's not the height of the total graph. Okay. D will move the entire graph up or down. C will move the entire graph right or left. And B will affect the period. And if you recall, the period is how often the graph repeats. And in our graphs, we're only ever going to draw one period of it because it will repeat from then on. So it's essentially telling you how wide the graph will end up being. And the formula for period is 2 pi, which is the original period, divided by the absolute value of that b. Okay, so the bigger b, the smaller the period will end up being. Okay. Now, we're going to start by examining the original graph of sine. And it looks like this. Now what's really happening here is that we literally took the unit circle, cut it at one point, and unwound it onto this graph. So we see the top half of the circle, then the bottom half of the circle. Okay. And so because we started at the unit circle, the points that were the quadrant points, the points that were on the x and y axes, become what I call key points. Okay. So they are the top, center, and bottom of each part of the sine graph. Okay. The high point has a y-coordinate 1, because that's the biggest y-coordinate sine gets on the unit circle. And the low point is at negative 1, because that's the lowest y-coordinate we get on the unit circle. And the x-coordinates are going around the quadrants, and we're going to always use radians when we're graphing. So we start at 0, then we get pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. I call these five points the key points because if you know where those five points are and you know the overall shape of the trigonometric graph, you can get the graph without much thought. So we are entirely going to be focused on these key points. So let's start with an example. We're going to learn how to graph y equals 4 times sine x plus 3. So in this case, we notice that the 4 is in the place of A, so we must be changing the amplitude or the height of the graph. And the 3 is in the place of the D, so we must be moving the graph up or down. Both of those only affect Y coordinates. So in our original graph, our X coordinates are going to stay the exact same, and we're just going to change our Y coordinates. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and label my graph with the x-coordinate key points because I know they do not change. Now, the 3 tells us how far up or down we moved the center line of the graph. So our new center is at 3, okay. whereas it used to be at the x-axis. The 4 tells us how far up or down we go from that center to have the high point and the low point. So 3 plus 4 gives us 7 as a high point. 3 minus 4 gives us negative 1 as a low point. So it's always the center plus or minus the amplitude to get high and low. Then sine starts at the center, then goes high, center, low, center. We connect these and we get our sine graph. Okay. Let's do one more example. You notice that this one, instead of having A and D, has B and C. 
So we're going to be affecting the x coordinates. And this is a little bit harder to do. Okay? So in our graph, the y coordinates are still going to be the same as the original. Center at 0, high at 1, low at negative 1. But to find our x coordinates, we're going to need to use this. And I have a trick, and this is where warning number 29 comes in. To find our new key points, we're going to take whatever is inside the parentheses or inside the sign and set it equal to our original key points. So this is going to give me five equations. And in each one, I'm going to solve for x. So here, I subtract pi over 4, then divide by 2, and I get x is negative pi over 8. Here, I subtract pi over 4 and divide by 2 and get x equals pi over 8. Here, I subtract pi over 4 and divide by 2 and get that x is 3 pi over 8. And similarly, I get 5 pi over 8 and 7 pi over 8. Now, you may have noticed a pattern, okay? Ignoring the pi's and the 8's because that's present in every single one. This is negative 1 to 1, to 3, to 5, to 7. Each one increases by 2 over 8 each time. So as long as you know the first two, and you can tell what you had to add to get from the first to the second, you can continue adding that amount to get all the other ones. Now let's produce our graph. Okay. Our y coordinates are the same, 0, 1, and negative 1. Our x coordinates, are now negative pi over 8, pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, and 7 pi over 8. And then we just have to place our dots. Sine starts at the center, the next key point is high, center, low, center. And then we just connect our curve. And this is our graph of sine of 2x plus pi over 4.